Good evening and welcome to Law Talk, the show that brings the law, the Constitution, and the events of the day into your living room each month. Tonight, we're going to cover three exciting subjects, and myself, James Barrett, along with Mark Malachowski. What are we covering tonight, Mark? Number one, we're going to talk about the U.S. Department of Justice is suing California over sanctuary cities, and I think that was triggered by Oakland Mayor, I think, Libby Schaff. Um, uh, tipping off a lot of drug dealers and stuff so they can, you know, hide their stash. And then the next thing is going to be uh, tariffs, trade tariffs were announced and uh, on aluminum and steel. And the third thing we're going to talk about is the Oscars. The Oscars? The Oscars. Wait a minute. That's <laughs> great for us because we know we've been nominated so many times. Anyway, why don't we start with the, this is obviously the federal government that's suing the state of California over three of their laws they passed to actually protect the undocumented travelers. So tell me what's going on well, with that. This, I think the flare-up happened when this Oakland Libby Schaff, who's like the right-hand woman of Governor Brown, right? So that's, Well, she followed in his footsteps. Well, she's his protege, and I guess, you know, she'll be the next governor in his place. Now, she's a dual citizen. She's an Israeli citizen, an American citizen. And uh, Jeff Sessions said, well, you know, we're going to have ICE come and arrest a thousand like MS-13 and Norte Americanas and Sud Americas who are dealing a lot of heroin. Well, they're talking about criminals who are yeah, coming yeah. to arrest. They're not coming down to, to no, break no. families up and, and crying well, infants there might and be, things like that. It's a that. crime family. Yeah, so I guess it's a, a cartel family. Yeah, it's you know, a crime all family. at home, it's like <laughs> it's leave it to beaver or is it leave it to a kilo. So come we, on, let's move it on. So we have $80 billion worth of heroin and methamphetamine coming across the border. And a lot of that gets sold and distributed in, in um, California, in Oakland for sure. And generally how that works, the street dealer usually grosses about 10 grand a day. They split, they give about 5,000 to the local, you know, beat cop. And then at every level, you know, they bribe the government people. Well, so, they have to keep kicking up to yeah, make sure there's no problem. Yeah, and so I would say the, probably the capo at, uh, you know, MS-13 or Norte Mexicanas, um, they're probably giving chef, I mean, if she's involved, she's probably getting... Well, they're not, she's not there handing her envelopes or anything, but she, well, sure. she gets election fundraising. And well, we know the, this. But the point is... Now, if you are somehow involved in this and there's a lot of heroin on the street and the ICE comes and gets all this heroin, let's say they pick up 20 or 30, 40 million dollars of heroin, and you're somehow involved in the distribution, you come up short. It's not good to come up short to the mafia or to the MS-13. No, it's not at you all. You can get uh, your head chopped off for that by MS-13. Well, actually, they go for, you know, they use uh, the hatchets. Mach the machetes. The machetes, machetes yes. yeah. So anyway. It's a friendly way to say hello. <laughs> it's a friendly way. Of, so that's kind of what's happened. Now, what's really interesting about this is you have the Attorney General, Javier Becerra. Yes, sir. And the Attorney General, Javier Becerra, is a member, and I think when he was at Stanford, he might have been the president of Micha. And Micha is the uh, Reconquistas, and there are people that believe that Azatlan. Azatlan, and there Cal we are again. California is part of Azatlan. And Azatlan is actually belongs to Mexico. The right. whole concept of Azatlan is that the, the repatriation of California back to Mexico. And because they can't do it by war, they've been doing it by slow invasion. Well, the thing is, no, they, they do some violence. Um, they, the Micha has called for the ethnic cleansing of every white Christian in California. So there's no doubt about it, that is their sworn duty if you're one of Micha, is to kill every single uh, white person in California. Well, actually, that's not literally killed. No, no, it but, is more supplant, well, and that's they said, why no, but they, we're they working got, through the they, politics. They said ethnic cleansing. Now, yeah. if you look at ethnic cleansing in the past, and these are kind of Bolshevik people and they're supported by the Bolsheviks, well, the way they did ethnic cleansing in the whole dorm where they starved people, and... Uh, if you tried to steal some grain, they would take your intestine, nail it to a telephone pole, and then whip you as you as walk, an example. As you ran around and no. unwind your tongue like that. And when the mothers went to um, our buddy uh, Lev Davidovich Borenstein, or Trotsky, right? But he was 
from the Bronx. Right. <laughs> and all the money for the Russian Revolution came from the Bronx. The Lower East Side. Well, how could you finance it? <laughs> well, they Otherwise, did. Like, how they could they did. finance They're it? They're the ones who bribed uh, the army to overthrow the Democratic government in uh, in. Wait a minute. You're trying to bring a comparison between the Trotsky well, I'm saying, and this the is current ethnic regime cleansing. that's this, coming into California. Well, I'm saying 11 million right, uh, Ukrainians were ethnically cleansed. Okay? And then if we go to the gulags in Russia, they ethnically cleansed 40 million people. So what the Bolsheviks always do, they go, well, we don't believe in republics. Now, what's a republic? What's it's, well, it's equal protection it's under equal law. equal protection under the law. Well, democracy course. is like who gets the most votes. Right. That's completely so, different. So let's and say, that's something that's lost on a lot of people. So let's say you ethnically cleanse everyone who's going to vote against you, and then you have an election. You tend to win a lot. You would if win. You, if you notice these Bolshevik countries, right, they tend to, or like you look at California, right, they kind of ethnically cleanse us here. Um, you know, they brought in... There's 90 million illegal aliens in the United States right now, probably 20 or 30. Well, they say it's only 11 million, but that's we ridiculous. all know those numbers are not No, correct. that's ridiculous. Those are the people who admitted to being <laughs> those illegal. Are admitted to illegal. Okay, if you look illegal. at Bear Stearns, they found 20 million worth by looking at the money, and then the Border Patrol says well, 5 million. Well, what they can do is they track the money's being shipped back yeah, but to also Mexico the border and south, the of the, border uh, patrol, south of Mexico, but actually. When the Border Patrol says 5 million a year are coming in, that was from 2005. So that gives us 70 to 90 million. But the point of the matter is, you know, of course, those people start voting, you're going to start winning the elections. Well, wait so, a minute. Motor Voter allows that now yeah, sure. because everybody gets a driver's license, and it, it sure as heck doesn't say in a driver's license that I'm not allowed to vote. It just says, hey, my name's my name. Okay, so anyway, I wrote a little letter to our buddy, the Attorney General, and I said, uh, since I'm a white Christian, so I'm going to be ethnically cleansed, I just wanted to do my funeral arrangements. What's going to happen to me? Right. right? If right. you're going to pull my intestines out, that's okay. I could have an open costume, but... And he said, um, is that how you're going to do it? And he said, thanks for supporting the Bolshevik check and meet uh, Reconquest of California and ethnic cleansing of all white Christians in the state of California. He says, why we've looked at your methods. What we're going to do is because we're going to use MS-13 and other Norte Americanos, they're going to like decapitate all the white people with a machete. So, well, I have a question. Wait a minute. Hang what, on. Let's happening? take it back to Oakland. How does this all revolve back to Oakland? Well, it's all part of, you know, the Reconquista. You can't touch your shock troops, right? They have amnesty, right? So if you have MS-13 people dealing drugs, killing people, you can't arrest them. Well, here's the problem with that. Um, let's, when we look back to what actually happened was, because California has been enacting the sanctuary state uh, and the sanctuary cities and all this, the federal government felt that we're going to make an opinion and we're going to say, OK, here's our what we're doing. We're going to say we're sending in ICE. We're going to arrest the known criminals that we have. Right. And unfortunately, um, what, what the mayor gave the tip decided off. Give to the do tip off. was did the tip off. And so although that some people debate how many people got away, the about fact 800. is but they said about 800 time. got away. They were all criminals, by the way. Well, These aren't all, just any, family men. But any male illegal alien in the United States is also a felon because they didn't register the draft within 30 days of becoming 18. That's five years in prison. And a two hundred fifty thousand. Well, you know they're not really they're not really enforcing the draft well, law. Well, I'm just saying, but that technically every single male here who's an illegal is a felon, not just a right. misdemeanor for crossing right. the border, but they're felons too. Right. So people go, well, they just did a misdemeanor. No, they didn't. All of them who are well, males. Why don't we why okay. don't we monitor this and start thinking? What's our second subject? Okay, tonight, so Mark? the second subject we're talking about uh, aluminum and steel, putting tariffs on aluminum and steel. And the reason Wait a minute, you're talking about tariffs from all countries or just some countries? Well, I think mainly when you're talking about China was dumping a lot of steel in the United States. And you have to understand that China is set up a little bit different as a communist country. The mafia and the corporation and the government are all one thing, right? So, well, no, what you're talking about in China. Yeah, in China. Okay, well, well in they, China, they, you're talking about the military and the government all the same. Yeah, well, so is the, everything in the yeah, It's all one all thing. All the triads and all that. It's yes, all I one thing. That. So, I mean, you do what you're told, right? Right. And so it's not like they really have an open market. So they can adjust the price of steel, whatever they want. No, actually, they yeah. In fact, what they've been doing is dumping. They've been dumping. In right. fact, what they what the whole plan with, with the, the way Chinese do business is they will literally subsidize all their yeah, right. factories and then they'll they'll send it here below market value to put our companies out of business so then they'll have a complete monopoly on it when our companies are out of business well yeah it's an imperialist method of increasing market share increasing you market. you you undercut the person to their out of business and then you take over that market share so that's um what they've been doing so and also 
China has been, you know, stealing trillions of dollars of intellectual property, and we're running, and we're running about a five hundred billion dollar a year deficit with China. Well, our, the problem is what they've been doing is buying American companies that have that intellectual property. And one of the things we that they've been trying to put a stop to, and they just done it with the company Qualcomm, which the Chinese were trying to buy for astronomical amount of money, but the federal government said you cannot buy Qualcomm. And it goes back to the early days, even when Clinton was selling, was allowing companies to sell L'Oreal, wasn't it? That had yeah. all the missile technology that President Clinton said, oh yeah, the Chinese can well, buy the Chinese, L'Oreal. The Chinese gave massive tips to the Clintons. Oh, but I mean, in the in the hundreds of millions of dollars, and the Clintons gave them both nuclear, um, uh, atomic and, weapons, uh, missile and technology. missile technology. So, and what the thing yeah. about this missile? But they were well paid. Yeah, but they were well paid. But the problem <laughs> was the missile technology allowed China to come up decades oh, in sure. their development. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When there was no way they would have ever caught up. No, they were, the, but the Clintons they were still got, back in fireworks. The Clintons but the got problem, hundreds of millions in cash. For them, yeah, yeah, when they bought Loral, that yeah. was a, that was a huge deal. But well, now they also had the guy they caught trying to get out of Los Alamos, and then they let him go. They let him with go. the laptop, and yeah, that was with all, all the nuclear stuff. stuff. But, so that was the Clintons. But see, Qualcomm has just come up as another time when the Chinese were going to pay astronomical amount of money for a company that has one value, but they're paying twice as much because right. they wanted all the technology in Qualcomm that would then be transferred to China, allegedly not transferred, but automatically transferred, well, well, the thing probably is, within the first week. I mean, what you've got to understand, if the Germans violate one of our patents, right, we can sue in San Francisco, and then there's full faith and confidence in Berlin. We can attach right. a bank account. Right. You can sue a Chinese company all day long, but yeah, you're yeah. not going to collect any money in you're China. You're not going to get a dollar. So they're pirates, right? And so pirates are pirates. So I would say they're enemies of mankind, and they're pirates, and they ought to be treated as pirates. And so one thing of doing that is saying, no, you can't dump your steel. But I think that they're stealing. Oh, I would look at it this way. Let's say you go out to your garage in the morning, right? And you want to go for a bike ride. And your bike's gone. And so then you have nothing better to do. You go down to the flea market. There's your bike. You buy it back for 100 even though you originally bought it for 1000 right? And so everyone goes, oh, you bought it for 100 You got it from 10% from China. It's so cheap. We got to go from what China. What a deal. Yeah, but it's my bike. It they was stole mine to it. begin with. <laughs> and every week they steal your bike back. And after 10 weeks, you were doing better if you could have kept your own bike. So China robs us every week and then sells it back at a discount. And I don't think it's that great of a deal. Well, you realize, you know, that I don't know if you realize there was the Carquina Straits. We used to have a whole fleet out there from right. World War II, right? right? Magically, it all kind of vanished. All no one's really talking about where that all those steel ships went. Right, right. But they, they're not sitting in the Carquina Straits anymore. And when you try to find out where those ships actually went, right. nobody wants to talk about it. Of course, that was all done in the prior administration. Right, right. And so now we're down. It used to be ships almost about uh, half a mile in, right. in length of the, the, all the ships. And they're all stacked like three or four deep. And now there's like one or two ships left. Yeah. And, they're, and, they're, and it's totally unbelievable. But nobody seems to have a correct answer where those ships went. Well, anyway, so, think about that. so they've been doing dumping. And so this is kind of a, you know, a shot across the bow saying, like, you guys have been dumping. We, we, and, I, and I think this is the first step. Um, and then if you look at Europe, it's the same thing. You know, they, and everywhere has a 16% VAT tax, which I'm against. But that's a 16% just right there. Well, wait so, a minute. You know, everyone talks about if we can replace our taxing system with a no, VAT tax. No, no, you don't want to do that. But you don't want to do it because they're never going to give up the taxing system. No, no, no. They'll add another just, tax, those, call it VAT, but and I'm then just that, saying, you'll still have we, all if, the taxes. If we sell something to Mexico, they put a 16% tax on it. So when it says, oh, you're putting a 25% tariff, well, that's really only a 9% tariff. 9% tar difference. Because they're, they're, they have all these hidden taxes. Not only that, China and all these other countries have all these kind of phony environmental rules and different regulations that drive the drive the cost way up. What's funny, it doesn't have anything to do with the environment. No, no, I mean, no. no. they just learn the lingo. That's if you use the right lingo, you can call no, it whatever I mean, you want. I call it, oh, it's a green initiative. No, it's so let's a, burn a mountain of coal. No, but I mean, say they have, they have a cost they add on that they don't call taxes, right? So, I mean, if you really start looking at this, you know, we are in the 25% range where we're being taxed to tariff. I mean, they don't call them tariffs, right? But we end up, if, the, if you want to buy this from American from another country, you're paying 25% more than coming the other way. So all Trump's doing is like, well, it should be even. How come these well, guys? Well, what he wants yeah. to do is be able to have, be even. Uh, to see if American companies can actually get back 
and start producing the same steel the way it used to be. Now, I'm going to tell you that's going to be an infrastructure nightmare to get there, but the idea is if you start leveling the playing field, and, I, you know, one way or the other, I'm not a pure e e economist to be able to decide whether or not that e leveling the playing field is really going to work, but I'm going to tell you, a t it's only 10% on aluminum, by the way. Uh, and aluminum's used a, in a lot of places when we're talking about even the jets and everything like that. Aluminum is used more, actually. Steel's used for more infrastructure and buildings, right. but aluminum is or like... Rebar. It, yeah. yeah, and so what's happening here is that it won't hurt to see what this will turn into. I mean, you can always repeal a tariff, but what you can't do is rebuild an industry if it doesn't exist anymore. Well, and I think what he's just trying to do. No, you can. I, I'm just saying, if you look at the numbers on all these things, you know, I mean, uh, Trump's numbers are pretty close to what they are. You know, he's saying, okay, they Chinese in the last few years they took they took 10 trillion of our money. You know, they ripped us off. The Europeans are ripping us off, and we're getting robbed. You know, and so let's say, hey, not only I think, you know, I, a lot of people go, oh, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, we shouldn't stop from getting robbed. We should, we should let them rob us so they like us. Well, see, they, this is you know, the thing. thing is, but it's I, like but NAFTA. See, yeah, but see, this is the way I look at. It. I don't even, I don't even care about. I mean, I not only want to get stopped getting robbed of half a, you know, half a trillion dollars a year. I want our money back that they stole. Well, see, yeah. here's the problem. What I we've been doing is we've been financing you know, our debt because our debt's been heavily financed by China. Right. It's not only what they're selling us. It's not only the fact they're buying the bonds. It's not only the fact they're buying the real estate. Not only the fact they're buying our companies. But we have a long catch-up to even get back into the playing field so we can actually make this yeah, happen Yeah, well, if properly. you lose money on every deal, it's hard to make it up in volume. <laughs> no, it is. It's very difficult to make it up in bond. And then you, you got to wonder more. what... Okay, so here's the deal. <laughs> First of all, are they going to actually be able to calculate that that 25% that we're putting in a tariff is, is actually catching up to the value of the steel that's coming in? Right. Or are they just going to say, we're going to do 25% tariff, and that's going to stimulate enough American industry to restart the steel industry and build a robust steel industry versus, well, maybe we should fall back and remove the tariff and get the cheap, the cheap well, I think, steel back. Well, I think it comes down, do you want to go down to the flea market and buy a twenty uh, $100 bike that was stolen from another American and sold to you by the Chinese? Or would you rather buy a $1,000 bike from the guy who made it and, uh, and the guy that makes it is able to profit, and then well, all he's the supply going, he, chain down well, he the is, line. He's, he's, the company he works for didn't go bankrupt, and now he's on OxyContin and on Social Security, right? Yeah. So, I mean, we're, bu buying, we're buying our own stolen property back every day from yeah, China. Yeah, I got that. Okay, so, so listen, Mark, I, I got to tell you something. These tariffs, they're waiting to see how they play out. So right. what's our third subject tonight? Well, the third subject is Oscars. Oscars. And so Wait a minute. There's a the big Academy thing on the Oscars. Awards you're talking about? Yeah, it's the Academy Awards of Science, Yabba Dabba Doo. It's kind of a long title, but basically what it is is Hollywood, right? Which, like with the first thing we talked about, it's the dual citizens run this. And um, they run... No, it's a Hollywood foreign press. Yeah, well, it's, but it's the dual citizens. You have and to have they, the artsy films. They, they, they run this and, like, used to be they had, like, okay, you know, who's coming to dinner? Right? And it was like, oh, the guy from the bad side of the track. And then it was like, oh, the black guy from the other side of the track. And dad is like, oh, don't be a racist. Don't be a mean guy, right? Now what they have is they have the white girl, the white Christian girl, is having sex with a swamp monster. So now they've gone to beast. <laughs> no, I'm serious. This is, they've gone to bestiality. That was the winning well, movie. Well, you know, the one that, that was the winning really movie. interesting about that, not only that it involved a creature from yeah. effectively the Black Lagoon. Right, right. That's it's just like the old horror movie. Yeah. It's a creature from the Black Lagoon, but now it's not sex with E.T., it's sex with a fish. Yeah, well, it, it might be an amphibian or a reptile. I'm not well, sure. Well, I got to tell you, it's a multicolored one. It but has I mean, like green so, and blue. And okay, so here's what's going on. If a white Christian girl brings home, I mean, and these guys... Who are making these movies are Israeli I'd like citizens. to see how they drive to a movie. Okay, now, but if she, if she, if you know, she brings home and goes, Dad, I, this is my new swamp monster uh, love interest, and he goes, I don't want you going out with him. I guess he's a speciest now. Yeah, he's right? a speciest. Now, what, well, wait a minute. Obama is there called, a form of racism on that one? Yeah, speciest. And so, you know, we had Obama called everybody who voted for Trump is a is a is a Nazi cis Hitler. 
And then we just had the other day Hillary saying we're backwards. Right? We're backwards. And so I guess if you... Well, beyond deplorable. If you don't let your white daughter have sex with a reptile, you're backwards. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're backwards. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wait a minute. I didn't see that law. Was that law passed <laughs> in California yet? Wait, when you start looking the at... The reptiles, <laughs> we... Wait a minute. Is there going to be a new category? <laughs> Or reptiles. And so, or amphibians, actually. And so, amphibians. And so this is the movie that won everything at the Oscars. And by the way, very few people saw it. Okay. but Made what's, very little money at the box and office. And what's interesting about this, like the same I saw people, Thor. I thought same, Thor made, what, a half a billion dollars. And great, okay, but that didn't get anything. But the same people who make this movie, right, if you go to Israel, right, and if an Egyptian, who's a Semite, right, has sex with an Israeli girl and, hey. lie, and lies to her and tells her he's an Israeli. You know what they call that? No. That's rape. He goes to prison. If you, if an Egyptian has sex with an Israeli, he goes to prison. Um, I mean, you can, and so, but it's okay for us to have sex with swamp monsters. Well, and so, I, I mean, this whole thing uh, is getting kind of crazy. But I, I will tell you this, though. Uh, you know that swamp monster would never be shot because everyone at the Oscars was wearing the, oh, the yeah. red little flag uh, for anti-guns. Uh, when in fact, by the way, did you realize that on the red carpet, on both sides are SWAT teams with machine guns and bodyguards with right. uh, under their jacket machine guns. And you know what they're saying? Oh, well, guns are bad. Except well. when we're protected by them. And I got to tell you something. <laughs> they had more armed people at this Academy Awards than they ever had. And they had armies. And very rarely would the, would the cameras pan on the armies with oh, M16s. Sure. Of course they won't. But you know what? <laughs> I wear my lapel. I'm yeah. safe. I'm safe. But I mean, this Come kinda, on, give me a break. This kind of comes into there's always been in Hollywood making fun of uh, uh, what they call shiksa, right? A shiksa. And basically, that's a white Christian girl who's like a slut or a dirty animal. That's and, terrible. And if you look at Harvey Weinstein, he had sex with many of these, and they're considered, doesn't matter, right? Well, I don't want to get into Weinstein because but, the casting couch has been on for 100 years, and every woman that goes to his apartment at midnight and they're wearing whatever, it's not, it's not, it, this thing has been blown out of proportion. Weinstein's a pig, but the fact of the matter is, Hollywood's been run on the casting couch since 1920s when Charlie Chaplin got in trouble for this. So it's not well, like Charlie anyone Chaplin, knows that. But Charlie, Cha Charlie no. Chaplin was a dual citizen, too. So. Yeah, yeah, of course. He, of course the he Swiss. was. He was a, no, he was a dual citizen. Well, so, wasn't he from Switzerland? Wasn't that yeah, the other? Israel. Yeah, oh, Israel, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, so the point of the matter is, you know, I think that if you're a white Christian and you don't want your daughter bringing home a swamp monster and be calling a specious, you should boycott Hollywood. Well, and I have already <laughs> taken that word out, and I noticed that the Oxford Dictionary is adding specious this year. Yeah. Is, and under it, it says, see the, see the, the sex in this movie with the swamp monster. Um, but it was, what is it, warm waves or water, yeah, whatever under, it is. water under the glass. I, yeah. But I think that falls into the, and, you know, if you looked at Woody Allen and Seinfeld, there was always these shikska jokes, you know, yeah. these little jokes, cutesy pie right. jokes about this. And I think you should go to Go Go Duck and look up Shiksa and see what it means. You won't find it in Google because that's, I, I, that's been you know, sanitized. I, I, I think I've heard this word, but yeah. I'm not familiar with it completely. But I do understand one well, thing. Well, it is something that's what, pretty insulting to white women. I will tell you, like the uh, let's go back insult. to why right. we're talking about the Oscars. I think they're out of touch. I think the, well, the, the movies, you, now there was something, the Blade Runner, what, 2024, yeah, yeah. one for a few uh, special effects. And there were some other movies that once yeah, the special lizard, facts. but the lizard having sex with the white girl wins. That and by was the, the way, they're movie. very proud of that movie. That's the winning movie. I, I, but you know what? The bestiality I, I think, movie. I think we're going to have to make this an annual event after the Oscars. It's just We're going to have to talk about the hypocrisy of the movies that allegedly well, I mean, win. I just think that, you know, this is an insult, and I don't think people should stand so close. Well, you I know what? It, it's not the you know we don't get the vote for this. I know, but the I only know people that. to get the vote are the people that are the motion. Well, they're the Hollywood people. They're, they're, they're you giving, have to be a member of the academy giving, to even vote. They're giving each other awards. Well, but they're patting each other on the back. Yeah, but the way you the way you vote for us is, is don't watch Hollywood movies. Well, for the wait next a year or so. You, no, that's see called what they, that's called boycotting. With well, your, boycotting, okay. boycotting with your money. Don't so go. I, I with would your say feet. boycott Hollywood until the next Oscars and see what movie they 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 award, but. If Hollywood's going to award a movie like this and you're a white Christian, you should boycott Hollywood. I wouldn't well, give them a penny. I got a question. Because this is an insult. Well, what about movies it's like, what was, the, uh, 
what was the Mel Gibson movie, the the Jesus movie? Uh-huh. Yeah, that 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 well, actually had, had a billion dollars in sales, and did they get recognized for anything? Well, he had to apologize for that one. Oh, he apologized. <laughs> Just like uh, who was the guy on the waterfront? Oh, Marlon Brando. Yeah, he had to get on his knees and apologize. So yeah, yeah. of course he did. Yeah, you, if you want to get back in the movie business, you can't uh, go against the power structure here. But yeah, this is the swamp monster thing, and like it's always been kind of these like it's a cutesy pie little inside jokes. But this is pretty blank. Well, the interesting part is if you look at the analogies of that cir- that circumstance from that, you could actually fit this into so many different categories of analogies. And by the way, the woman that was the cleaning lady that actually found the fish was deaf. Uh-huh. So on top of that, so the romance and the whole twist was. She's deaf, but she recognizes. And so there's this whole overtone of all these different little genres rolled right. into this movie. And so it hit all the spots for people as they watched it. I'm sure people were crying. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what happened at the end of this, the movie, but I would say that uh, there was probably not a happy ending, and that's why it won. Because the, movie I don't, went, I don't know, the I don't, movies with bad endings are always the big play. I don't know if the swamp monster ate the, the pretty white girl or not. I don't think she ate not. the. I don't think she got eaten. But, <laughs> but I will tell you. But it, I'm saying this is pushing it pretty far. I mean, if the Israelis want to make a movie about white Christian girls having sex with swamp monsters, I'd like to see. Let's have a movie about an Israeli girl having sex with a swamp monster. Well, how about an Israeli girl having sweat, uh, sex with an Egyptian? Yeah, or even well, that, an Egyptian. Oh, I'd love Egyptian. to see this one. Oh, by the way, and you know what? I guarantee no one would complain about that. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, right. Oh, she got her head cut off. Oh, they went to prison. No well, big no, deal. It's just, that's it's just that's the way they do it. Well, I mean, I think it's the, you know, it's the, it, it, it is just such an amazing thing that, you know, these people live in an insulated world where they can really do these kind of insults and they just smirk about it and get away with it. And they go, oh, well, shishka is actually a cute word. No, it isn't. No, Look it's, it a, up. it's a, it's Look a it profanity. It, it is, is profanity. a slur. It's, it's a, slur. a slur. It's a slur, a racial slur. And it's not cutesy pie. It's a slur. It's an insult. Well, I got to tell you, Mark, it's been an exciting evening. And I'm going to tell you, I I want to welcome you back for next year <laughs> when we start seeing yeah, we'll the see, Oscars what, 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 Oscar, what do they do? How much you want to bet Black Panther <laughs> Black it, Ga- is going to be the number yeah, one movie be, next be year? Black yeah, of course. It will probably be uh, Misha. How many categories does that one fit into? <laughs> Misha ex- ex- uh, ethnic cleansing will be, <laughs> will be the next year. The next well, year. I don't know about the, ethnic cleansing, the mariachi, but the, the, I will tell you, Black Panther is a great movie. It's gonna I, be, I, I, I was in. I was thrilled it's, by every second of it's it. It's going to be the, the mariachi plan playing De Guglio or whatever. Well, it could be. It could be the story <laughs> of an of a undocumented alien coming across the border in the 60s and how he worked himself up into a powerful elite. Well, what's interesting is, like I say, going back to Alexander the Great, right? When he invaded Persia with his army, well, he went there so he could pick strawberries yeah, and, make pick strawberries life, right? and make a better life. And then you had Attila Hun invaded um, Europe so he could pick strawberries and make a better of life. Course he did. And then you had the Bolsheviks. But he was an undocumented warrior. And then the Bolsheviks came from New York and invaded Russia and made communism. And that was so they could pick strawberries. Oh, they wanted and make a better life.